I think that makes a good difference. I think that's worth it for sure. And here it is with the painted set of steps as well. In this series, we'll build each kit from the Fantasy Village set by Battle Systems, discussing any construction pitfalls and build mistakes, as well as kit specific build tips and possible conversions. Once everything is built, we'll test a variety of methods to colour the edges of the terrain and then finally conclude with an in-depth overall review video of the whole fantasy terrain set. Follow along and consider subscribing if that sounds like something you don't want to miss. In this video, we're going to test some different methods for colouring the edges of the battle system's terrain. I'm going to use a variety of products, but they're going to fall into two main categories, pens, and paints. In terms of pens, we've got a brown sharpie, a Letraset Pro Marker, which is cinnamon coloured, and a Windsor & Newton Pro Marker, which is sandstone coloured. In terms of paints, we've got Game Colour Earth, Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop, Storm Vermin Fur by Games Workshop, Dryad Bark by Games Workshop, and we've also got a contrast paint, Wildwood. So when you look at these terrain pieces, you can kind of see the edges of the terrain are sort of a lighter colour than the printed surfaces and they do sort of stand out a little bit. I've got to be honest though, when they're on the tabletop they don't really stand out as much as they do when you're watching a video like this and you're really looking at them. But anyway, let's, let's uh, start with the pens and in particular we're going to start here with the Sharpie. So you can see it goes on really quite easily but it's incredibly dark. This seems to be quite highly pigmented. Like for me, that's that's too dark. If, if you like that result, then Sharpie do do a range of colours that you could try, but it's not for me. The Letraset marker has a wedge end and a fine point end. We're going to use the wedge because that's a lot easier to apply the ink inside onto the terrain. If you've seen some of my videos where I built the terrain up and I've maybe scratched the surface and tried to paint or pen over the top of it, I've used this Letraset cinnamon marker and I've got to be honest, I think it's a little bit too orange. Just looking at it there against the Sharpie, it's better than the Sharpie, but it's still too orange. I don't know why I'm shaking that there, it doesn't need shaking really. You can see that this is exactly the same style as the Letraset, which makes me think that I think Windsor & Newton probably bought out Letraset. And I, I bought the Sandstone after trying the Cinnamon, which was too orange. I looked at the website for Windsor & Newton and it looked like sandstone would be a good alternative. Now you can see straight away that the, the yellower colour is more in line with what the wood artwork looks like on these pieces of terrain. Now I think it's a lot better than the cinnamon. You can see there where I've gone around the edge with the cinnamon. That is one thing you need to be aware of. I mean, I was being reasonably careful, but imagine uh, using the pen to go over the whole set and finding that you've sort of drawn all over the artwork. That is sort of one of the downsides of this technique, you'd need to be quite careful. Uh, the sandstone pen went on in a kind of sort of translucent way, so I quite like that. Um, I think it's fully opaque, it's not going to look as good. Talking of opaque, we're going to go with the Game Colour Earth now, and sort of straight away you can see that it is very opaque in comparison to the pens that we used. So just thinning it down a little bit, and I think one of the things I would say right, right now at the start is you kind of have to make sure that you don't put any pens or paint or ink or whatever on the terrain that's really, really, really wet. Luckily this paint isn't, and stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll have a look at what the terrain's like after it's had the paint or the pens put on, and then it's dried. So I'm not too keen on that earth. It was a little bit too opaque, but it was a reasonably good colour match for the wood. So if you like that style, then, you know, go ahead and try something like the, the earth paint from, from Vallejo Game Colour. At this point I decided that I really wanted to try the Storm Vermin Fur on one of the roof sections. I thought it might work on the wooden fencing and that, but I really don't think it's going to, so it is a really good match for the edges of the roofs. Yeah, I think that looks really good, and I thinned it down a little bit again, and it's gone on slightly more translucent than the Game Colour Earth. But I think that's the way to go. You want to you want to see the difference between the grey board and the white, the edge of the white printed surface a little bit. It just gives some variety to the edges of the terrain, so that it's not like one big homogenous mass of colour. I'm 
found the wildwood here and you know same kind of thing it's a little bit too opaque i like the color the darker color actually looks better than the earth in my opinion even though it doesn't doesn't match quite as well the color of the printed surface I'm just sort of testing there to see if uh, the wetness of the paint has reduced the stability of the terrain, and it really hasn't. So I thought I'd just try some wildwood as well. Just, you know, I've got it here. I see what it's like. This one really surprised me. I thought it was going to be way too dark, but because it's translucent, it seems to work really well. So the grey board in the middle of the carved terrain is obviously more grey than the white of the printed surfaces. And when you apply the translucent contrast paint, you can sort of still see the that variation in the edge of the terrain in the actual cardboard between the grey and the white. I think that works really well. You don't get that really opaque look across the whole of the edge of the terrain. Personally, I think that works really well. You can see me wiping some of the contrast paint off the off the printed face of the terrain. And another benefit of the contrast paint is because it's it's more runny, it's wetter. It's easier to just quickly wipe that off. You've got a bit longer to notice that you've done it. So here's a bit of terrain that um, had been ripped off and I hadn't noticed earlier. So I'm just going to put a bit of the paint on, blend it out to the sides. I think that actually looks really good. You wouldn't have been able to blend it out to the sides like that if you were using an opaque paint. You probably could have achieved the same result if you'd used one of the Letraset or Windsor & Newsroom Pro markers. Same result in terms of being able to blend it out to the sides, I mean. So I really like the Wildwood, so I'm going to go ahead and paint a reasonable amount of the rest of this fence piece. because. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking that's probably my favourite of the paint so far. In comparison to an unpainted piece, you know, I, I'm thinking that looks a lot better. You know, let me know in the comments below what you think. It didn't take too long to paint up that fence piece, but it did take some time. So at, at this point, I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, I'm going to want to see how long it actually takes to paint up a piece of terrain and then work out roughly what that means in terms of how long it would take to paint up the whole lot. So I'm going to use the wildwood on a set of steps. As you can see in the video, I'm just using the edge of the brush. Not letting the contrast paint pool really heavily on the brush. You know when um, Devil and Mud and Agrax Shade first came out and we were, everyone was like just slopping it all over their models? You don't really want to do that with this stuff or it will soak into the cardboard quite heavily. There we go, just over three minutes to paint all the bits that you kind of mainly need to make it look good and I'm going to go and paint the rest of the bits I think you need to make it look a lot better and we'll just see how long that takes just under five minutes I haven't painted the underside which I don't think you need to do so one set of steps in five minutes you know I think it looks pretty good you can see where I um, put a bit of contrast on the top of the surface there I'm just seeing if I can rub it off with some water but you can't really once it's painted on it's painted on you know, comparing it to an unpainted set Again, I think it looks a lot better, and five minutes isn't a too long a time to take to do something like this, but that's five minutes for one set of steps. What about three sets of steps? What about a bunch of buildings? What about, you know, a load of fences as well? You'll have to kind of make that decision yourselves as to whether the time spent doing this is worth it. I'm, I'm on the fence about that. No pun intended. I do think it looks a lot better, though. Putting a bit more of the Storm Vermin fur on, because I maybe put it on a little bit too thin, I think. If you can't be bothered to do the whole set, the edges of the roofs are probably one part where you can make a real difference quite quickly. So in comparison to the unpainted edge of the roof, the smaller roof here, you know, I think that makes quite a big difference. So that's what it looks like on the storage barn with the sort of painted parts of the edges of the terrain, on the roof that is. I think that makes a good difference. I think that's worth it for sure. And here it is with the painted set of steps as well. It definitely looks better in my opinion. I think it really just comes down to whether or not it's um, worth it from the time taken perspective. Just a quick comparison with the earth colour against the wildwood. You know, I think the wildwood contrast paint produces a much better result. Just testing with my thumb there to see if it's, uh, if it's weakened the edges of the terrain. It doesn't seem to have, but I will like, wait a whole day and then test it and you'll see that result at the end of the video. I think that looks way better. You know, let me know what you think. Just sticking my nail in there to see if there's any major difference in how well the cardboard's holding together. And at this point, I don't think there really is. 
So having seen how good the Wildwood was, I thought I'd try some Black Templar on one of the um, uh, like cemetery gate pieces. What I realised as I was putting it on though is the Black Templar is very black and the gate pieces are not actually black even though when you pick them up you th they look black, they're more like a sort of a dark brown. So at this point I decided, nah, let's put some Wildwood on it because it is more of a dark brown. What I noticed is as the Black Templar dried it started to look a lot better than when it than it did when I first put it on. I think all that really tells me is if you've got a load of different colour contrast paints you could probably even mix them up and um, come up with some colours that work really well on this terrain. I haven't got that many of them so that's why I'm not doing that. But in terms of the consistency of the contrast paint in my opinion it works really well. So here I am, a day afterwards, everything's completely dry. Here's the piece that was painted with earth, and I'm just sort of bothering it really with the with the scalpel, just to sort of see if it's coming away at all, or if it's coming away a lot more than if it hadn't been painted. So a little bit there is coming away a tiny bit, but I really don't think that was a paint. It was probably like that already. Looking at some of the pieces painted in the wildwood, which I would have expected to be more susceptible to problems because it's a wetter paint. But I put it on reasonably carefully and I don't think loads and loads of it soaked in, so I'm not noticing that it's any softer or that it's split the cardboard or that it's weaker than this surface here that hasn't been painted at all. You can see there's some cracks in the cardboard on the on the stuff that I haven't even painted, so, so I, I don't think painting the edges, certainly in the way that I've done it here, really reduces the stability or the long-term use of this stuff at all. One thing I did do though when I was painting it up is I accidentally left the leg of the storage barn in my wet palette. Not a good idea. It got absolutely soaked. So you, you can see that it's uh, as sturdy as the other leg. But what I did was I squeezed it to squeeze the water out and the printer surface just like fell off in my fingers. I mean that's not a criticism of this terrain. You're not meant to be soaking it in water. It is cardboard. But you can see here that just leaving it to dry it's basically as sturdy as it was and it's not all falling apart so that tells me that even when you absolutely soak this stuff in water I mean you know you can't chuck it in the bath or something but if you get it wet but then you let it dry don't mess about with it just let it dry it will return to shape and it's kind of all right you know using the wildwood just to cover up that mistake now and I think that shows just how well that paint can be used and just really quickly blend it in to me that looks totally fine now I'd go so far as to say like forget about using the pens and the opaque paints. I really do think this contrast paint is the way to go. Let me know if you've used some different techniques to paint the edges of your terrain and in particular I'd love to know if you've painted up the edges of an entire set and how long it took and like whether you thought it was worth it. You know I'm leaning towards it not really being worth it but when I think about how long it took to build everything if I then spent the time painting up all the edges, really it would only be an extra 10% or 15% on the total time of the whole project, so it probably is worth it, but whether I'll do it or not, I don't know. So thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for my final review of everything in the final video of the series, which will be the next one.